How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Wednesday on this program. You know what that means? We got Dynamite, AEW Dynamite, coming up here tonight. And you know what else is coming up soon? Me on video. We'll get that figured out here in a second. But anyway, there, hey, there we are. Hey, we got Dynamite coming up tonight. And a lot of things AEW related. There have been some hirings. There have been some promotions. Tony Khan did an interview with Sports Grid, talking about recent WWE changes, most notably the retirement, which was actually a resignation, of Vince McMahon. And uh, and we also got the full lineup for the show tonight. Eight scheduled segments, including just added a interview segment with John Moxley. And you're not going to go wrong with an inter- uh, interview segment with John Moxley. So we'll talk about that as well as the raw ratings for Monday night, which uh man, I love I love posting ratings cuz then you can you can look through my mentions and find out who you should mute and or block. Yeah, it was a fun day. Uh but we'll talk about that and uh we got Conor McGregor getting a major movie role and we have got the nxt television report now if you've been watching raw and smackdown there have been a uh, fair number of noticeable changes on raw and smackdown i cannot say the same for nxt the only change that was visible to me at all on this show is that uh they have turned katana chance and caden carter back 100% babyface. If you've been watching the show last several weeks, they've been acting very heelish, but 100% babyfaces now. So we'll talk about that later on as well. Lots to get into back in a moment. Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. I want to quickly talk about the Raw number here today because the show did very, very, very well. And as bullish as I am on WWE... Uh, everyone went a little too nutty on Twitter about this number. Here's the deal, everybody. And it's probably going to be the same thing with NXT tonight. Raw had no commercials in the first hour of the show. That is 90% of the reason the show did as well as it did. So people losing their minds that Vince is gone. We're going back to these. No, you had a you had a commercial-free first hour. And as a result of that, Hour 1 did 2.43 million viewers. They did, here's the good news, they did keep 2.29 million of those for Hour 2 and 1.97 million for Hour 3. So if you're looking for good news, I mean, the good news is they did an excellent job holding the audience over three hours. So that's good. But, you know, unless they're going to do a commercial-free first hour every week, you are not going to regularly be seeing, at least anytime soon, 2.2 million viewers every week for Raw and a 0.61 in 18 to 49. Best number since WrestleMania, which did a 0.63. Obviously, the day after SummerSlam was a uh, factor as well. So the number was inflated, but they did do a, a pretty good job. Uh, especially that, you know, the third hour decline, they've had some bad third hour declines. 2.3 million to 2 million is not that bad. They still lost 300,000 people. But I do believe that part of the reason that they held those viewers, and it's it's actually common sense. If you do a, a first hour with no commercials, it does a huge number because people don't tune out during the breaks. If you normally do a third hour, where in the last half hour, there's about seven minutes of wrestling and the rest is commercials and video packages, yeah, that hour is going to absolutely tank. They didn't do that this time. They still had commercials in the third hour, but that insufferable period where for 30 minutes, it's uh, entrance, commercial, entrance, video package, entrance, commercial. They didn't do that. So I think that helped, uh, helped cause the third hour to decline less than usual. But good number. Won't be that good next week, but overall a positive. Now, who were these people that filled your timeline with such? Actually, strife? I didn't. Even, I didn't even read any of the uh, um, 
the comments any of the comments but but the way it works on twitter i don't even know why i've mentioned this before so if i post something and you know a thousand people write something goofy in my mentions for some reason like a dozen of those will just end up on my normal uh when i go up to you know check my timeline but it's it's like a random dozen i don't even know why but anyway I was just scrolling through today, and oh, you know, great number. Oh, my God, Hunter's going to turn it. Oh, this is... No, it was a commercial-free first hour. That was 90% of the reason. And, of course, SummerSlam. No angry AEW fans who are saying this is all a, this no. is all a myth, all you WWE I didn't see people that, are hyping this up. That craziness. But if you watched NXT, uh, they also had limited commercial breaks. They did? Yeah. Oh. You didn't notice? Kind of felt I like this show, and I was like, God, this show is long. Yeah, there were no commercials in the first half hour, and then they did some commercials. And I think the second hour, there was like a long period with no commercials. Like, bro, this is taking forever to get through the show. So I'm not a fan of limited commercial interruptions. I want as many commercial interruptions as possible so I can fast forward <laughs> through them. Preferably not during matches. Although, man, they did a commercial. I'll get to NXT later, but I think it was, uh, what match was it? They did a commercial break, and they came back uh, during the match, and literally the first thing we saw was a botched spot. Was it Lash and It was Alba? Mandy Rose and Sarai. Oh, that's Mandy. Yeah. <laughs> the, the match started during a commercial. And so they come back from the commercial, and the first move you see is Sarai is coming off the top. And I, I guess, I don't know if Mandy was supposed to catch her or what, but Sarai hit Mandy. And fell down, and then Mandy stumbled and fell down. That was the first spot that we saw when we came back from the break, so we'll talk about that later. AW announced on Wednesday they are expanding their talent relations team, promoting four familiar names within that group, and bringing on former Impact women's wrestler Madison Rain as a coach for the women's division. Rain begins her new role tonight. 36 years old, part of Impact's last set of tapings in Louisville. She lost to Masha Slamovich and Mia Yim. Uh, Sanjay Dutt, QT, Pat Buck, and Tony Schiavone have all received promotions, three of which are to the vice president level. Dutt is now the VP of Production and Creative Coordination, where he will coordinate communication of AW storylines, liaise between post-production and key staff to maintain... That's a lot of words. He got a promotion. (laughs) <laughs> He's going to go back and forth with stuff. You want to describe his liaison role? Marshall is now VP of Show and Creative Coordination. He does a lot of words as well. Buck is now VP of Talent Development, where he also... A lot of liaising going on. Apparently you make more money to liaise. Yeah. I was unaware of that today. Until today. Well, in a way, yes, you do. Shivani. You are very valuable when you can be the salve between wounds and such. Shivani received a promotion as senior producer and special advisor to talent. Chris Daniels will continue to serve as manager of talent relations. Did well, they you need know, to announce any of this? Did they mean to? Did No, did they need to? It's not like they're a publicly traded company or anything like this. Well, and no, part of but, me, you know. I understand why, but there's a part of me where it's like all you did was give everybody online, if something happens, somebody else to tag about, well, what are you going to do about this when it comes to your role of this and that? It's like, uh, I don't know. I, I guess it's a good thing, though, if you look at it from the aspect of he's – Obviously, trying to delegate authority, I would assume that's what this is about, and try to make things a little bit easier on himself, considering he's the the last call for these sorts of things. So, yeah. Tony Khan believes that new people in charge of WWE is a good thing. Well, we're on the same page. Well, yeah. Khan spoke to Sports Grid on the recent changes. He said, quote, it's going to change the competition, but I think that's a good thing. AEW's got a big fan base. We're in 130 countries now around the world. Here in the U.S., we built a great fan base. The competition is going to change. It's a different person in the chair opposite me, but I don't think that's going to be a bad thing for the wrestling fans necessarily. Well, it's definitely not a bad thing for the wrestling fans. No. And you know what else? Not a bad thing for the wrestlers either. No. Khan also said the move benefits wrestlers themselves. Yeah. Probably more so than ever, he said, I imagine the great wrestlers are going to be in demand. 
Again, I think this is probably going to be good for the wrestling fans because that's going to be one of the most exciting things about pro wrestling, free agency. It's one of those things that was really missing from the sport for almost two decades before AW came in because there was not a legitimate competitor in the free market. It was one of the worst things, I think, that happened in American sports in my lifetime when WCW closed down. Well, in terms of uh, wrestling, sure as uh, heck was one of the worst things. So, you know, well, my uh, my prediction, very quickly, okay. if you don't mind, Mike. Sure, go ahead. In the, uh, in the short term, there's going to be some, uh, it's going to be a bumpy road for AEW because, you know, WWE's got money and uh, they're going to be looking to get some people. And I think that, and I know this, this is not I think, because I, I know this. You know, there are a lot of people that two weeks ago would not have been considering strongly going to WWE. Whereas now, I think that they are open to the idea. And furthermore, I mean, we've seen small changes, small positive changes. If these, if we continue to see positive changes... Uh, the number of people that are willing to look at WWE is going to be even bigger, and the number of people that are uh, at least considering it, uh, they may more than consider it. So, uh, you know, the the Cody thing was very important, as we talked about. Cody goes there, gets buried, that would have been bad times. They pushed Cody to the moon. That opened a lot of people's eyes, and uh, but mostly the people that were, like, bigger, you know, the WWE-style guys. Now, even if you're not a WWE-style guy... I mean, you could get an opportunity. So it's going to be uh, tough in the short term for AEW. But in the long term, there's going to be too many people in too few spots in AEW or in WWE. And then there will be people looking to go to AEW if they've got a good television deal with money. So anyway, back in a moment, we'll get Mike's thoughts, Observer Live. Back here on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Uh oh, what's up? I'm just, I, I'm just. Uh, the, we have our chat here, and uh, some of them just cannot. Uh, the, the Cody thing's overblown. Listen, do you think people are dumb? Okay, a guy left AEW. He walked into WWE with likely a seven-figure deal as a main eventer with his AEW character and got a push. You're telling me you don't think anybody in AEW went, hmm? Wow, that's intriguing. That really opens my eyes there. Well, I can tell you because I heard from them, okay? But, you know, if you don't believe me, you can use your own brain and see that that would be intriguing for people, especially because before he showed up, remember we hear, oh, he'll be chasing the 24-7 title. Oh, I wonder if he'll be Stardust. Remember all that? Well, that didn't happen at all. The exact opposite happened. He even kept his music. You don't think that opened anybody's eyes? You think these people are dumb? Come on. It did. Now, of course, Smarten it's, up. it's not the end all and be all because he is Cody Rhodes and he was there before and there is a relationship and he is the first guy back. And so there's all these things where what works for one may not work for everybody, but it's a new page has turned. And I know people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear about these changes that may or may not slowly get made and all that other stuff. I know they don't want to hear about it, but tough you're probably going to have to hear about it because I'm sure they do in the next couple of years want to put their best foot forward when it comes to talking and dealing with talent. Number one, for all of the things that have happened in that company and the culture that is currently being investigated, maybe it's time to like, you know, change some things there, but also because they look at MJF and they look at other people on that roster, powerhouse Hobbs, and they look at other people and they go, we may want to have those folks. And now Vince is out of the way. And now Uncle Paul is here. You remember what Uncle Paul did for NXT? So are we going to see massive wholesale changes? I don't know. As CM Punk said, he doesn't think there's going to be any changes in the culture whatsoever. We'll have to see. But the Cody Rhodes... The whole deal with him, and granted, he also has a character that fits perfectly in with WWE, and I think MJF, there's other people that do. Some other people may not be so lucky, but it at least is giving them an option where, and a big option, that you may have something to kind of, you know, compare yourself against and compare the company you're working for against. So, it, it, look, everybody's going to throw 
their flags down over this, and they have been, and they will continue to do so. But one thing about talking about the death of WCW as somebody that was a big NWA fan and grew up with Crockett promotions and was a bigger WCW fan for quite a long time and tried to, to hold on to that ghost for as long as I could. Yeah, it was bad for the wrestling business that it died, but it needed to die. It, it did. And in with hindsight being 2020, all these many years later, you let, you got to leave scorched earth it was the whole thing about killing a territory was you left, scorched earth in most cases and you had to kill everything to rebuild it back up again and you see the direction that ring of honor took things you saw because there were no options but ways to watch things became easier you know lime well i heard all these things of where you would download japanese wrestling shows and that became more of a thing so all of that, the rise of MMA that was taking place during that time that nobody really remembers now, but the pride and the K1 and all that sort of, all of that stuff, all of it was essential and necessary to get us to where we are today. So as sad as that was, and as much as it sucked for a lot of people, including people that lost jobs, who had lifetime jobs in the business and wanted to have jobs in the business, yeah, that was sad, but it needed to be done to get us to where we are now. All right, we got the uh, Dynamite show tonight. Undisputed Elite return. Thunder Rose and Tony Storm versus Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter. Christian versus Matt Hardy. Powerhouse Hobbs in action. Jericho versus Wheeler Yuta. Winner faces Moxie for the interim world title at Quake by the Lake on August 10th. <laughs> Come on. What? We should actually. Why don't you What's name wrong with each Quake one by of the these lake? shows? Why don't you name each one of these shows? I just don't understand why they name every show. I understand if it's a charity event or something like that, but it's like we we have subtitles for every show now. It's not just it's dynamite. Not every show. Dynamite. There's Quake no there's the no lake. special show tonight. It's just dynamite. <laughs> We're building to Quake by the Lake. Yeah. I guess we are. Yes, we are. You want to run a pay per view every month? I don't. I'd much rather have three. I don't want to, four I don't want to name a year. every other show for no reason it's either. Not every other show, bro. NXT does the same thing. They got Heat Wave in two weeks. Well, because NXT's bro, doing it, have that you, makes it okay. Hey, listen, Mr. Uh, uh, whatever the name of your podcast is, the other one you do, Adam and Mike. Which one? Show. I got plenty. Listen. What you got? You like New Japan? I like New Japan. Oh, it's funny. Every single solitary New Japan Strong Show has a name. Every single solitary one of them. Not every other week. Not once a month. It's Ignition. It's Retribution. It's Fascination. It's... <laughs> My balls itch because they Nation. ran out of stupid, goofy names to have for these things. You so ever, you ever be... thought, by the way, that, that uh, it's run by an analytics guy who probably uh, sees that when oh, you actually Christ. name it a special name, it does better than... You know, you ever thought of that? Hmm. So if it does better, why doesn't he do every show that way? Maybe he could title Rampage that way and more people would watch. You know watch. what? If Christmas is special, let's just do it every day. Oh It'll be special God, every day, right? This. You stop. I'm trying to give you a business lesson here. Oh, yeah. Let me know. Please. I'm, I'm trying, but you're not listening. <laughs> UFC star Conor McGregor said for his first movie role, Amazon Studios announced Wednesday, McGregor will be playing a role in Prime Video's Reimagining of the 1989 film Road House. Now I'm angry. The movie will begin production this month. It will be available on Amazon Prime Video when it's released. Maybe you could watch it, then get angry. Maybe it'd be better. You don't know. Oh, no, most of these remakes are not better. These reimaginations of things just never seem to work out for me. Okay, and Roadhouse, why do you why do you defecate on the classics, people? Hey, you know why what's funny about this, that? by the way? You know what's funny? What? Jake Gyllenhaal. Or Gyllenhaal, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, you know what he plays in this roadhouse? Who? He plays a former UFC fighter. But Conor McGregor's got another role. I guess, he, he, I guess he could be a former uh, <laughs> UFC fighter Punk. as well. Yeah, He'll probably play the role that Ronda Rousey played when she made, remade Roadhouse. You know they've remade this before, don't you? Did they, they actually remade this with Ronda Rousey? Where have you been, bro? Well, how was it? I didn't watch it. I haven't even seen the first one. That doesn't surprise me. You should. I got better things to do, like watch NXT 2.0 on Tuesday nights. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Think about subtitles for the Brian and Vinny show. Conor McGregor is very excited to expand his storied career to Hollywood in this reimagining of Roadhouse, a beloved 
classic, says oh my his God. spokesperson, Karen Kessler. Pop, proper 12 bottles are going to be getting thrown everywhere in this, isn't it? Well, probably. Oh, my God. Maybe he'll work for free if they do that, because he's a businessman. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. The only way he's working for free is if it's on work release. Again, I, the only thing I want to know is who plays Morgan. Who plays Terry Funk? And will Terry Funk be in this movie? Well, dude, it'll probably I, be uh, McGregor. I, I need Terry Funk in this movie, even if it's just one cameo. You go to his house, you just show up there, put the camera on him. I don't care how you do it. Get the Funker in that movie. This person says only suckers work for free. You know who says something like that? Someone poor. And here we go, making fun of poor people. I'm not making fun of them. I'm pointing out. Go. I'm pointing out. If, if you, if you ever you, been one? If you own... Okay, if you own a uh, distillery or whatever, whatever you would say that he owns for his proper twelve, and they say, "Listen, uh, you do this role for us, and we'll have proper twelve all over this movie. It'll be every everything anybody drinks will be proper twelve. They'll hit each other with proper twelve bottles. Uh, at the end, the hero will use a proper twelve bottle to you know ignite the motorcycle. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> That's a good deal." Because you're going to make way more on your proper 12 than he's going to make to uh, for his first ever movie. You think this guy's making $20 million for this movie? Not a chance. Not a chance. What do you think he is, The Rock? <laughs> no, The Rock didn't have any, that many legal bills. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't. He does not, no. He does not have that many legal bills. That's true. Oh, my God. Yeah, million dollar Chico. $12 million, baby. I've worked for free before. Practically worked for free on these cameos. But you know what? Oh, you should every, every little bit counts. Every oh, really? Little bit when, counts. When's some of that going to trickle down? It doesn't trickle down, Mike. Yeah, I'm willing to it's, work for it. Not what do we 80s. need to do here, boss? Dude, I'm you can tired start your own overnight. cameo. You want me to set it up for you? Oh, my own Take cameo? Take a cut? Wait, didn't you laugh at the thought of me doing a cameo, including directly saying... Who would actually buy a cameo oh, from you? Oh, I'd never do that. But you know what? If I get a cut, I'll set up your cameo for free. Because it's oh, okay to work for I'll, free sometimes. I'll, I'll gladly cut you. Gladly. All right. After the break, we're going to talk about NXT 2.0. But let's see, let's see when the text message been here very quickly. Oh, this person's talking about the draft. It's a good question. What are they going to do with this draft and brand extension? Because Kill it. Because Vince pretty much gave up on it. But Hunter's back. And they didn't have, you know, there were, I guess there were some SmackDown guys. Well, the fall season's coming, you know, September, October here. Yeah. Uh, one new thing on NXT last night. They introed a wrestler, went to picture-in-picture, picture, introed the second wrestler, and started the match also in picture-in-picture. Picture. Let's do more of that. Put the less important stuff during the commercials. Well, that was a slight production change, but I don't know. Uh, they also, I, you know, they had to do a lot of commercials because they did a commercial-free half hour. This stuff all has to be, you know, made up for. Look, I prefer that more than the we're going to introduce somebody, go to break, come back, video package, all that sort of stuff. But if that's working for them, as annoying as it is for me, that then it's working. Well, let's go to the break. Observer Live. Well, let's talk about NXT 2.0, everybody. There's some good stuff on this show, but there was also some stupid finishes. Not a fan of stupid finishes, but what can you do? Believe it or not, the uh, the opening match with Katana Chance and Caden Carter, Toxic Attraction, Elissa Leone and Valentina Faraz, and Ivy Nile and Tatum Paxley in a four-way elimination match for the uh, NXT Women's Titles. Dude, this match was impossibly good. I thought this was going to be a disaster. Booking-wise, it was a disaster because somehow one half of the former tag team champions wasn't allowed to choose a partner to be in the match. But I don't think there was one botched spot in this entire match. Everything everybody tried, they pulled off. Even uh, Ulyssa Leon and Valentina Faraz, they did all these dives to the outside. They all looked great. The place was going crazy. And it uh, comes down at the end to, uh, who was it? It was uh, obviously Chance and Carter. And, uh, yeah, and JC Jane and uh, Gigi Dolan. So it comes down to those two teams. And they went back and forth for a while. And finally, the uh, baby faces hit their finish off the middle rope, the combo 450 splash. This place went crazy when they won these titles. And they're crying in the ring. It was a total baby face moment. For whatever reason, they've been doing angles the last several weeks where 
they were they were acting heelish. And I'm like, they're turning these two heel? Well, apparently uh, that's been that's been changed because they won these titles. They cut a total babyface promo later. They're so happy. They're crying. It's a great opener. And uh, no commercials. So uh, first half hour, I think there were no commercials on this show. Did you did you think your girl Katana Chance afterwards uh, shot the whiskey and let loose like she likes to do? Of course they did. You know, I was thinking, you know, uh, uh, in Japan, uh, they have certain wrestlers where, you know, their name, like Sonata. It's it's Sonata in all caps, one word. Yeah. I think that uh, I think that her name should be Katana Chance with an exclamation point. And every time that she comes out, it's like Max Dupree. How they have to say it like that? The announcers and the the ring, the ring guy. I think that well, they should always announce them. Come into the ring, Caden Carter and Katana Chance with an exclamation but, point. But should Tatum Paxley be all lowercase except for the Pax part? That should be capitalized where it's Tatum Paxley. Tatum, nah, I can't do it now. I'll have to do it uh, later. All right. We had uh, Carmelo and Trick were celebrating Carmelo's birthday. And uh, Carmelo issued an open challenge. And Giovanni Vinci starts strutting down to the ring to accept. And Nathan Frazier zooms by him and jumps in the ring and steals his open challenge. It was bound to happen yeah. at some point. I, I like this it. Nathan Frazier. He when, he when he first started out, is like, what is up with your hair? And, you know, good worker, but what is going on here? This guy is totally, I've turned the corner on him. He's, he's just wacky enough. He's got a personality. He's got a weird, quirky personality. And even the hair, it like fits this quirky personality. And he's a great worker. So uh, Nathan Frazier, Carmelo Hayes, had a very good match. And uh, he did not win the title. Uh, there was interference from uh, Trick Williams. Uh, actually, it was uh, Giovanni Vinci's at the desk. And they had some big shebang, and he ended up getting water spilled on him, so he got angry. And he shoves Frazier off the top rope, and then... Uh, uh, Hayes hits the guillotine leg drop and gets the win. So good match sets up uh, Giovanni Vinci and uh, Nathan Frazier. We had uh, God help me horrible segment. God, Braun Breaker and JD McDuck. Can we get this match over with already? So Braun Breaker's out there, and uh, <laughs> JD McDonough's in the ring. They're going to do a contract signing or whatever. And J.D. McDonough is just droning on and on. And the crowd's doing a boring chant. And finally, Braun Breaker's like, can we sign this contract already? And J.D. says, well, I know the challenger normally signs first, but uh, and I like you to. And so Braun's like, give me this thing. And he grabs the thing, and it, he actually made this, this, uh, he made this comment. I can't remember what the comment was, but it was something like, he said something like, you can't beat me in size or ability, so you're trying to beat me with your brain. <laughs> I was like, so you're dumb? That's what you're telling me, Braun Breaker? You're a lunkhead? So anyway, he signs the contract. Then he hands it back to J.D. McDonough, who's supposed to be like, you know, he's a, he's a surgeon, he's a butcher, he's going to take these guys apart. So J.D. McDonough, I think... Uh, don't, isn't it one of those pens that you poke, like if you're going to get a, a blood sample? You know what I'm talking about? They give you a pen, yes. you go, chink. Well, J.D. McDonough gets his pen, and he goes, chink, on his finger. And Braun Breaker has to act like kind of creeped out, like this guy poked himself with a pin. Now there's a drop of blood. And so, you know, McDonough pokes himself to get a drop of blood, and he signs a contract in blood. And he's supposed to be like a tough, creepy guy. But then, like, his hands are shaking as he hands the contract back. Like, I don't know if he's squeamish of blood or something like that, but he didn't look like he was comfortable doing this. But his character is supposed to be like... Anyway, this whole thing just sucked. And can we get this over with already? I'm oh, sick man. of this feud. Botchamania showing him putting in the blood capsule before he was shoulder blocked last week. <laughs> I just... think this actually might be worse than, uh, what's his name? The last feud that he had. With uh, Gacy, Gacy, God, yeah, this homie needs to get back in his car and drive back to the UK and Ireland, and I want Jordan Devlin back or something because this has been a miss for sure. We had Mandy Rose and Sarai, and uh, man, Sarai, you know she's good, but uh, not 
here. I don't know. Well, it's not She's her. It's it. Mandy. Watch this Mandy match. Stinks. Watch this match and just watch Mandy Rose. If there was ever somebody who is so sick of being someplace and they just want to get out of here, and they and I think she actually did an interview recently where she's talking about how she wants to go back to the main roster. She's so over it, and you can tell watching her matches. Her bumps are terrible. The match was not good. Well, you know what? That's not a good way to get out of there, considering that you were down there for a reason in the first place, and they give given her so many extra chances because she's beautiful in all the fitness magazines and all that rigmarole, fine. They have a zillion great athletes on that roster now that would look good in fitness magazines who may be actually coming along and becoming a better wrestler. The only saving grace that she's got is to put her on the main roster, put her with Sonya, and that's it. They're a lifetime tag team. That's how people like them the most that's how they're going to be most effective other than that you know i don't want to see anybody lose their job but i'm sorry get out as a fan as a viewer somebody watching i would rather see somebody else have that position have that time have that spot it's crazy so Soraya got hit with a jumping knee and pinned and then rose was going to beat her up and uh outran zoe stark zoe stark's got to beat her for the title this zoe so. stark she's good she works well. The fans love her. She's got passion. She's got to beat her. Another one with Triple H coming back. That was somebody who benefits from that big time. We had a Tiffany Stratton vignette. They put her back in her Leo so she could do some gymnastics. I was fine with that. And she does a bunch of flips and everything like that. And then she goes, time to go shopping. And love off it. she goes. This is good. This is good. She did mention Wendy Chu and showed her rolling around in her nah, bed, still having nightmares. Then we had uh, Duke Hudson beating up Axiom backstage, and they uh, end up rolling down to the ring. Axiom challenged them to a match. Duke Hudson's beating him up, beating him up, beating him up. And then uh, tilt a world victory roll, Axiom pins the guy. And big pop, Duke Hudson has to sell it like he's he's all angry that he lost. So, Hey, Brian, yeah. is every win for Axiom a textbook victory? Yeah, I guess, because he's smart. It all adds up. He ain't working for free. Because he's a mathematician. We don't know that. Can't add up nothing and nothing. You get nothing. We had the Creed Brothers versus Tony D'Angelo and Stax. So the story was that Roderick Strong was supposed to be there, but he just didn't show up. So the Creeds have to go down the ring by themselves. And uh, they had a good match. And the finish came when uh, D'Angelo is down in the corner and uh, somebody is, uh, uh, they slid him something. It's crowbar. Electra uh, slid him the cane. Yeah, and so he goes to grab the cane, but then all of a sudden he looks up, and there is the returning Santos Escobar. And Escobar punches him out with the brass knucks, stum- stumbles backwards, gets pinned by Julius, because they pinned Julius last week. Julius gets the big win with a sliding lariat. And uh, this is leading to Escobar and D'Angelo, one last time coming up in two weeks of this heat wave show. Th- them pulling Stax out of the ring on the other side of that so he couldn't make the save at like Mach 1. And they cut to the shot so you don't see it. But it's like, I hope dude got his knees down because otherwise he face planted really hard. We had a great Roxanne Perez video. Because Roxanne Perez is a baby face. She's so nice and sweet. And she's doing this promo. And it gets to the point where... She has to talk about how Cora Jade called her a selfish bee. So uh, they build up to this spot, and then she goes, You called me? And they cut to a shot of Cora Jade saying it. Because, you know, she's so pure, she can't say the word. And so they keep going, and then all of a sudden, she launches into this tirade on Cora Jade, and they don't cut away. And she calls, Okay, and anyway, this was a great promo by Roxanne. A great promo. And then they go to Jade backstage. And she actually, she did way better than last week. And she's ready to just, uh, she she wants to, she doesn't want this fight. So she's going to turn it down. And uh, Mandy Rose walks up and says, you know, we got to get rid of this Zoe Stark. You mind taking care of that for me? And Cora's like, what are you talking about? You're always concerned about yourself. And then Mandy says, well, listen. I'm supposed to face her in two weeks. If you take her out, you can have her shot at the women's title. So now Cora Jade is considering it. Joe Gacy versus Brooks Jensen. Mm. Bro, you want to know why this guy's a virgin in his storyline? Look at his attire. God. 
dude. The funny thing is he's wearing the same thing Filthy Tom wears, but he wore it so much worse. <laughs> they have this match, and uh, Joe Gacy, gimmick sucks, good worker, and he's doing his best with this guy. And then all of a sudden, pretty deadly, runs down the aisle. They hit the ring. They're in the ring! Brooks tosses one over. Larry hits the other guy out of the ring. But you know the stupid rule. They didn't touch him. Even though two men got in the ring and he had to dispose of them, he turns around into this springboard Larry and he gets pinned. And then Gacy tries to uh, convince him to join. We had Alba Fire versus Lash Legend. And uh, uh, it was okay. But listen, everybody. On the Bright and Vinny show on Thursday, I am going to lose my mind over this match. I don't want to do it here because there is an FCC. But I will lose my mind on the Brian Vinny show Thursday only for subscribers to WrestlingObserver.com. That's your heads up. <laughs> you want to see him continue to feel? And if you can't figure out what I'm talking about, heads up is all you need to know. And then the main event. <laughs> well, first we had Carmelo and Tricker outside, and they are helping these women fix a tire or something like that. <laughs> what was that? Then they go to the ring for Solo Sokoa, Von Wagner, Falls Count Anywhere. They had a good match. They had a good Falls Count Anywhere match. They beat the hell out of each other. They brawled all over the place. They end up outside, and and uh, Solo Sokoa hits tr- uh, uh, It was Carmelo. And Carmelo bumps into the back of the car, and he's like, my hat! He's worried about his hat. And then Solo Sko gets thrown into the dumpster, and Von Wagner thinks he's won, but it's not a dumpster match. And all of a sudden, you see the dumpster go, and he pops out, and they brawl all over the place. And then finally, he uh, gets the win, so he's the king of the streets again. Uh, Superfly splashed through a table off the post for the finish. It's a good match. So uh, overall, had its ups and downs, but I'd say it had more ups and downs. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Should mention that uh, Filthy Tom did, in fact, get his first win in the G1. When he out Yano to Yano, just as I had, uh, just as I had advised. Did you, did you lend him that hair? But you know what I did not advise is him going out drinking with Yano afterwards. So I'm pretty well, sure Yano got his revenge before the night was over. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking. You gotta, you gotta lean into Saki uh, slowly. That, uh, ooh, poor Tom. Well, I think he's got uh, bad luck fallé next, so he does. Might be uh, bad luck, maybe returning, because that's that's a big dude, and you know I love Tom and all, but he's not doing too well against these big dudes. He does yeah. much better against dudes his size and smaller. Something tells me that Bad Luck Folly will not be impressed by Sister Act or Sister Act 2. You don't know that. That's true. It was the number one movie in Japan for three weeks. Well, he Who knows what it did in New Zealand? So a and it could be. Huge fan Folly could be. If we had it more time, I'd look up the box office in New Zealand. But in fact, we don't have enough time. Sadly. But that's what we've got tomorrow for. As well as tonight, Wrestling Observer Radio, myself and Dave Meltzer. Tomorrow will be Observer Live, as well as the Brian and Vinny show when I get to really get into that Lash Legend match, which is more than just one move, by the way. It's 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 an issue with like everything that they're doing in terms of recruitment and such. Yeah. I just got massively irritated when I when I saw this hey, spot. It's- hey, if you want to feel better. Check out the Big Audio Nightmare, which is available for free from the website wherever you get your favorite th- uh, podcasts. Yeah. yeah. Working for free, I see. Hmm. How about that? Hey, we're out of time. I want to thank you all for listening. Thanks, Mike, as always, callers and listeners. My main man, Dom. You're clear, Dom. We'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.